wherever you may be and however you may be listening. Thanks for making us part of your day. Mercedes Lewis in 15 minutes has gone from the Packers to the Chicago Bears, one of the more thoughtful NFL players, will be joining us. Uh, he's been in the NFL for almost two decades, uh, former UCLA Bruin, can't wait, and a friend. I can't wait to see him again, uh, Mercedes Lewis. J-Mac, our audience coming in from the Euro Championships, been unbelievable level of soccer. Unbelievable. England laid a bit of an egg, 1-1 with Denmark. England hasn't looked sharp. They I was haven't. talking to the guys uh, during the break, uh, Lala, Sturridge, and the, uh, England just hasn't looked as great as we thought they would. But it's early. It's still the group stage. Euros are always a fascinating preview of the rising stars before we get to the World Cup. Uh, England's interesting. Now Copa starts, and oh, now yeah. Brazil's going to be in Copa. Tonight, uh, uh, Copa starts. We'll talk about it during the break. Argentina and... The World Cup champs. So that's... it's uh, And a lot of pressure on the United States men's national team, which debuts Sunday in Copa yeah. with Greg Berhalter, who was almost thrown out of his position until they... Had a draw with Brazil after that stinker against, I think it was Colombia, 5-1. to one. Yeah, you, you, So there's a lot of drama coming up in the Copa. Copa and uh, U.S. men's national team debuts Sunday in the Copa, but the Euro championships have been yeah. phenomenal. I, I love how you're defending so many people today. Kyler Murray, Greg Berhalter. Who else? Who else are you going to defend? NHL? Yeah. Well, what else is going on? Any Glass half full Colin. Yeah, I like it. Okay. <laughs> well, the Lakers have yet to hire a head coach. And you have to wonder if their two superstars, LeBron and AD, are part of what is holding up the process. NBA coaching is a lot of managing personalities and egos. And the Lakers just clearly do not value coaches. Strange, considering the best modern coach is Phil Jackson, but uh, and he did very well in Los Angeles, but they just, they don't value coaches. They, they, they view them as very disposable. And let's be fair here. Uh, last six champions are six different teams. Half the coaches of those teams who are champions, they're coaching somewhere else. I mean, Nick Nurse is coaching somewhere else. Mike Budenholzer won a title, got fired. He's coaching somewhere else. And um, so I, I do think football coaches simply matter more than other coaches. If you look at three of the coaches we view as really elite, Steve Kerr, Greg Popovich, Eric Spolstra, combined last year, won a single playoff game. A single playoff game. Popovich got Wemby. No impact on the win-loss record. And Popovich is a good coach, great coach. And I, I think there's a couple of factors here. Number one, as salaries continue to escalate in the NBA with a new TV deal at $7, 8000000000 billion a year, it's going to be harder to coach in the NBA. Players are going to have much more say, much more power. Donovan Mitchell wanted uh, J.B. Bickerstaff gone in Cleveland, and he got him gone. <laughs> he, got a, he got him jettisoned. I mean, that's just the way the league works. It's not a knock on Donovan Mitchell. It happens every year at least once. LeBron's done that a couple of times under the radar. So, And the Celtics, let's be honest about the Celtics champion. I mean, didn't that feel mostly about not even players? It felt like it was driven by general managers. Danny Ainge got Tatum and Brown to the Celtics, smart drafting. And then Brad Stevens, who didn't have that much impact as a coach, but great impact as a general manager, went and got Derek White from a tanking team, Porzingis from a tanking team, and Drew Holiday from a tanking team. The Celtics don't feel like they're Joe Missoula's team. He'd only had one year as a head coach before Boston. It was at a Division II school. <laughs> so they built a good staff around him. But the Celtics championship felt like Danny Ainge and Brad Stevens driven. And that's not a knock on coaches. I mean, they, they, they threw Joe Mazzula into that because of some uh, actions uh, by the previous coach. And it was, okay, we're, we're fine. And the previous coach was supposed to be a high-rising, ascending star coach. And Mazzula was kind of like, uh-oh, could be in trouble here. And Mazzula won the title. Um, so I, I look at this. What head coach in basketball could take this Lakers roster over and make a real difference. A football coach's difference. Well, Kerr, Pop, and Spolstra can't even do that. I mean, Steve Kerr's great. He's not available. So the Lakers clearly, people's actions tell you what they value. 
The Lakers are going to hire their what? Seventh coach in 13 years. And this J.J. Redick thing, he's the lead. He's out. He's in. Dan Hurley. They just don't, they don't value coaches. Doesn't mean they're necessarily wrong. I think they have some value, but they don't have an NFL or a college football coaching value. You are managing, to a large degree, personalities, a rotation, and egos. Um, so yesterday, Tom Palosaro, smart guy, was on Rich Eisen's show. And he was talking about something. Um, you know, the NBA's got this thing where it's called like a super max, so players can only make, you know, there's a certain level on it. And, and, and by the way, I've, I've always felt that salary caps to some degree are like sports socialism, but you probably need it because you have big cities, small cities. And if you look at baseball right now, the Dodgers and the Yankees, big economies, uh, like they just dwarf other rosters. They just have more good players. It's not even particularly close. And neither team has been at full strength this year. And they're great. And so Tom Pelissaro was talking about like a potential – Owners are talking about it now in the NFL, a potential quarterback cap. There certainly has been discussion within the league, Rich, among certain owners about even the idea of a quarterback cap, that at some point you want quarterback numbers to not go over a certain uh, percentage of your salary cap. To my knowledge, that really hasn't gained traction in part because so many teams have paid their quarterbacks. And if you went to suddenly an NBA model where all of a sudden you have the max and the super max, and there's really only a couple levels that guys can get paid at, it it kind of changes the dynamics in terms of how you set yourself up salary cap wise or whatnot. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it'll ever happen. I'm not sure if I'd be for or against it. What I am against is paying good quarterbacks great money. And it's always struck me as odd. As much as America loves football and obsesses over football, fantasy football, betting football, watching football, we, we are a football-loving nation. It's our soccer in Europe. We love it. And you can put it on Thursday, put it on Monday, put it on Sunday, put it on Saturday. I mean, UFL just comes out. It's getting like 1.2, 1.3 million people. It's been a league for an hour and a half. But it always cracks me up. If you go to the last 12 quarterbacks that have won a Super Bowl, there's only two ways to do it. Have a Mahomes, Stafford, Brady, Peyton Manning, next level superstar. Like a really elite all-time guy. Or have a talented guy on a rookie contract. Russell Wilson, Joe Flacco was in his last year before he got paid. And then there was the outlier, the Nick Foles, Carson Wentz, Super Bowl, both those guys weren't getting paid yet. That's it. That, that's it. Last 12 years. So when I hear media, fans I get, but even fans I think are so much smarter today than years ago with football because they watch it. They care about it. Um, you know, these people that are winning fantasy football leagues, it's, it's not easy. Like, it's, it's competitive. Fans are smarter than ever. You can, you can go ask people in, the, in the, the DraftKings business and those kind of businesses that the sports better is smarter than he's ever been, and he's getting smarter. Except when it comes to quarterbacks and saying, pay two of the bag and pay Dak the bag, you are immediately eliminated. Immediately eliminated, if you look at our last 12 years, from Super Bowl conversations. Based on the last 12 Super Bowls and the only two quarterbacks who have won, which is an all-time talent or a really talented young quarterback not making any money, there are only 12 quarterbacks that are in the Super Bowl bubble this year. And I'll give you those 12 quarterbacks. The upper echelon guys who are really all-time elite arm talents, and I think you know who they are. We can put them on the screen. Josh Allen, Burrow, Lamar, Patrick, Aaron, and Matt Stafford. I'll keep Lamar on, though he struggled in the playoffs. He wins 77% of his games. And I think Aaron Rodgers, though he's old with that defense, Aaron still, when he lets go of that football, it doesn't look like almost anybody Last else in the planet. In so those teams coach are the in the Super Bowl bubble. And then the other six, these are six really good NBA quarterbacks, and they're not, they're not getting paid yet. I consider them very 35. talented and not getting paid. So Paul, Justin Herbert, Jalen Hurts, Trevor Lawrence, Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, and C.J. Stroud. I think Purdy's the least talented, but he's talented he enough, and he's not making a nickel. Contract. And that's it. Now, who's not on that list? I mean, this coach is the Jared Goff, coach in the NBA. who I think's really good, uh, but not in the top six. 
and really, really expensive. Put them up there with the rest and as much as I like Detroit, if you look at the last 12 years, there's two groups. He's firm, he's fun, I had a chance to